Hey everyone, welcome back. I'm Greg with Lens Pro to Go, and it's been a while since I've talked about some new gear. So I'm back with this FS7 Mark II. Now, not much has changed from the first version to this one, but I'll go through what has, and you can decide for yourself if it's worth the upgrade, or if you're just getting into this system, if it's worth the extra 1500 bucks. First off, all of the updates have been done to the outside of this new camera. There are no differences in codecs, menus, or frame rates. So if you were hoping for that, you're gonna be out of luck. But the changes they did make help the FS7 Mark II be much more user-friendly and faster to work with on set. Starting around the front of the camera, you'll notice a super beefed up locking E-mount. This mount is actually welded to the rest of the frame to allow for much heavier and longer lenses without the need for lens support. Right up from that, you still have the ND filter presets, but now, just like the FS5, you have a variable ND, so you can put it in a specific stop or anywhere in between. With this design, it also allows for automatic exposure adjustments through the ND, so instead of changing your aperture, shutter speed, or ISO, it will compensate with NDs, which is a pretty amazing and powerful tool for quick run and gun or dock style shooting. Quickly jumping away from the body of the camera to the arm for the shoulder rig setup, you can now adjust the length with this easy to use thumb screw, instead of needing a screwdriver like you did on the Mark I. Staying on making things easier, they also updated the eyepiece support to now have a square tube to stop it from rotating under the weight of the LCD in the viewfinder. They also have made some welcome changes to the viewfinder, making one of the hooks fixed so you don't have to struggle with both hands to get it on, and they've added a sun hood for the LCD screen if you don't want to use the viewfinder but are shooting outdoors. Getting back to the camera and moving around to the side, you're gonna notice that we get a lot more options for assignable buttons, a total of 10 now, where it was only six on the Mark I. This will be a huge help because we all know it's not fun trying to find something in Sony menus when you're on set and short on time. Now you can just set it up beforehand and keep shooting. Two more nice changes to see, they've increased the space in the XQD card slot so it's easier to put cards in and swap them out. Then finally, we have a small LED indicator light so we know if the camera is on or off. So with all of these improvements, do you think it's worth the upgrade or the extra 1500 bucks from the Mark I if you're just getting into it? Do you think Sony should have done more? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you wanna try out the FS7 Mark II, head on over to lensprotogo.com, your source for all your online gear rentals. As always, happy shooting.